Vision presents Dr. Eric Klein. Yesterday you were able to give an address to uh, Asor entitled From Noah's Ark to the Ark of the Covenant and Beyond, a call to arms against junk science, amateur enthusiasts, and uninformed documentary filmmakers. Would you like to encapsulate that briefly? Briefly. Well, I was uh, writing a book for National Geographic and uh, was absolutely amazed at the uh, nonsense that's out there, both on the web and elsewhere, and decided that while I was writing this companion volume for the TV series, uh, that I would uh, try and give to the general public an idea of what we know and what we don't know, and uh, try to say what we believe and what we don't believe. Uh, and basically writing it for my wife's grandmother, who really doesn't know. You know, when somebody says they found Noah's Ark, she calls me and says, did they actually find it? And I'm like, well, no, and here's why. You talk about junk science, but it's a truism that science is playing an increasing role in archaeology these days. Absolutely. Would you like to talk to that aspect of junk science as opposed to true science? Well, absolutely. In archaeology today, we make a, you know, use of science every day. We've got all kinds of things from uh, you know, magnetometers to you know, precise surveying and all of that. Junk science, on the other hand, really doesn't involve science at all. It's uh, ignore contrary evidence. They um, speak to a high moral purpose. They basically are not practicing science at all. And yet, it looks like it. It's really pseudoscience. And that's where the problem comes in, because these people that are saying they found Noah's Ark or they found the Ark of the Covenant, they cloak what they're doing in legitimate sounding terms, and it's actually got nothing to do with anything. And yet, how does the general public know what to believe and who to believe? So that's why I wrote this book, the From Eden to Exiles, to put out the data. You know, look, this is what we know. This is what we don't know. This is why we haven't solved this mystery yet. This is where we might go. And you know, of the various things that have been suggested, here's a ranking. This one might be possible. This one's less plausible. This one is you know, wrong completely. And I basically put it out there so that the next time somebody sees a, a TV show or reads a book or hears something, that they'll be in a position to make a judgment. So uh, the book that I wrote, which this paper was based on, uh, is not going to end the debates. I'm, I'm hoping it starts the debates, but it'll start them on a basis of fact and not fantasy. So we, I want the archaeologist to put out the data so that everybody can have an informed discussion and then be able to say, you know, that nonsense I read on the web, that's exactly it, that's nonsense. Here's what the archaeologists are saying, and now let's talk about it. Right, so I really wanted this to get a dialogue going. So in this paper, I basically threw down the gauntlet to my colleagues and said, come with me. We have to counter uh, the, the pseudoscience that's out there. We have to tell the people that next time somebody says they found Noah's Ark, you know, we have to either you know, respond right away and say, you know, here's why you're right, you did find it, or here's why you're wrong, and this is why it's not. And that way, the general public has some idea of whether to believe this stuff or not. Right now, they've got no idea what they should believe. Why is it that the media latch on to these people rather than legitimate archaeologists? Well, the, the media latch on to these people because it's sexy. I mean, it's attention-grabbing headlines. What we do as archaeologists uh, are, it, is extremely interesting, but it's not always sensationalistic. In fact, it's almost never sensationalistic. Uh, and so what these people do is they make these attention-grabbing headlines because they have nothing to lose. Right, if I make a claim, like I found Noah's Ark or the Ark of the Covenant, I have to produce evidence for my colleagues. And I, if I'm going to publish it, I have to go through peer review. My colleagues are saying yes or no, and the university has to say yes or no. These people, the pseudoscientists, are mostly working outside of academia. They have nobody they have to answer to. If they say they found Noah's Ark, but they didn't, big deal. And the public forgets it. They go out the next year and find it again. But if I say I found Noah's Ark and I haven't produced it, boom, my career's gone. I can't afford that. So that's what you've got is, is these amateurs are grabbing the headlines and then the public doesn't know what to believe. So there but, you have it. But hype has always been associated with archaeology for the last century or so as yes. a means of funding archaeology. Is archaeology any better funded today than it was in the past? Well, uh, no. Archaeology is not better funded today. And in fact, that's one of the problems. I would say uh, if you're you know, a member of the general public and you want to help fund biblical archaeology, 
don't go for one of these pseudoscientists. They're not going to find Noah's Ark. They're not going to find the Ark of the Covenant. They're going to take your money and use it. And you know, some of them are true believers and they're actually looking. <clears throat> some of them, I think, are con men. They just found a way to make an easy buck. But if you actually want to give money, there's all kinds of digs that are digging at biblical sites. You know, donate to Hatsor, donate to Safi, you know, which is biblical Gath, donate to Megiddo. You know, if you actually want to search for the Bible, we've got people that are digging at sites. You know, some of these people that go looking for the ark, they get, you know, three, four, five million dollars in donations. We could dig at Megiddo, which is Armageddon. We could dig there for 20 years on five million dollars. Don't give it to them, give it to us. You know, and then you'll have, you'll see a bang for your buck, literally as opposed to just seeing your money go off into a black oblivion. So I, th I think that um, archaeologists have a, you know, we have to give something to the public. But in return, we need a little help. And you know, we can't run this on a shoestring. You want good archaeology? Somebody's got to pay for it. So you know, we've got good volunteers coming and all that. But again, you want to make a donation to help the Bible? We've got plenty of people. Call up ASOR, call up AIA. Call up your local archaeology and say, who needs money? You know, and there you go. The, uh, I think it's true to say in terms of archaeology, but most major sites now have their own web sites. Absolutely. Dedicated to the dig and what is happening there. Yes. And means of communicating with the public. Exactly. Almost every site has their own website. In fact, at Megiddo, where I'm the associate director, we have our own website. And not just that, we now have streaming video. If you call up our Megiddo website, um, up will come a nice little movie in the middle which starts automatically and there you've got a six minute video on what it's like to dig at Armageddon. So it just starts automatically. So, you know, just go to Google and type in Megiddo and TAU, which is Tel Aviv University. Up will come our website and you can see six minutes. And the idea is, you know, we're digging this coming summer. We'll be there June 15th to July 31st. And, you know, we'll take people who are interested. You have to be at least 18, and you can't be older than 120, but somewhere in there, you know, if you've always wanted to come dig, come dig at Megiddo, and you know, digging Armageddon, that's a once in a lifetime experience. So we put up this little six minute video to give people a taste of what it's like to dig. So really, you, you talk about the amateur enthusiasts really having an outlet in being able to participate in multiple digs. Absolutely. absolutely. Not only in Israel, but... <clears throat> yeah, Syria, Jordan, Egypt, you name it, you can dig anywhere there. Yeah, and here, I mean, these are our uh, amateur lay people and all that, as, as opposed to the you know, crackpot amateur enthusiasts. So, yeah, if you want to come dig, there's all kinds of digs you can go on. They're running every summer. Yeah. Thank you very much.